flat out. Okay, so the, one of the, the issues about this dog is uh, it has a, a negative reputation um, and that really is something that's created by Eurocentric uh, 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 elitism. You know, dog breeds, uh, the, the, the dog kennels have gotten us to the point where people think breeds are original and that anything that is then not one of the original breeds must therefore be a mutt. Now that's not true at all uh, and that's not to say anything negative about mutts either because as I said earlier uh, a good dog is the one that uh, that fits your your purpose and your your context uh, and makes you happy um, and and a mutt can do that just as good as any other breed of dog but the the thing is that breeds are not original the original dogs are land races um, and and so the kennel unions have fooled everybody in in thinking otherwise uh, um, the, uh, uh, the future of these dogs, uh, because people think they're not one of the elite uh, uh, um, pseudo-original uh, uh, kennel union breeds, they therefore, you know, must not have any kind of value. And so they don't really uh, uh, retail for, for great prices. I mean, uh, uh, you can get a, a, a bulldog costing 30,000 rands, you know, that can't breathe can't run 100 meters without collapsing, uh, uh, would overheat. They can't breed naturally. They have to artificially inseminate bulldogs uh, because they don't breed and give birth naturally either. So you can take a dog like that and end up paying 30,000 rands for that dog because it's got good lineage. You know, it comes from a, a pedigreed stock. Um, and that you won't find in the Africanus. I mean, these dogs retail for about 1,500, 2,000 rands now maybe. Um, and people don't really want them because of the negative connotation that comes with this idea of it's an African dog. You know, um, it can't have any value. But let's put that in context. Nguni cattle, 20 years ago, had a similar kind of reputation. If a farmer was uh, breeding Limousin or, or Bonsmaras, you know, and he had uh, uh, saw a couple of Nguni cows come into his, uh, into his paddock or Nguni bulls come into his paddock, he, he might have had a problem with that. You know, uh, nowadays he'll open his gates and say, go on my cows and uh, get some good diversity uh, to get some, some hybrid vigor, some hybrid strength. Um, and, and that is really the, that I think over the years in, in working farms, people have understood the value of breeding within a working context and that really is the African model um, that never has uh, uh, an animal been bred for a look or an aesthetic it has been bred for a purpose so that dog fits in with a context if it doesn't suit that context it's of no value and so it would either not have breeding opportunities uh, uh, or it might even be culled you know and, and make it into the pot you know to 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 supplement protein if that is uh, uh, the, the, way of the, uh, uh, the way of things. But the important thing to realize or to understand is that the dog emerged as being an absolute specialist in its context. It, were, it emerged as a working model. And you don't see the same thing when you get to the kennel unions. You get dogs that have been described as a certain look and that look then becomes evaluated at a, at a um, show and it then gets deemed, if its papers are in order, it gets deemed a good example of the breed or a poor example of the breed. And that does not tell you anything about how that dog fits into its context. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I've read stories of, of uh, um, uh, uh, breeds like Rottweiler, who have uh, um, this particular dog that I was reading about, would have a, a, a feeding uh, 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 problem and uh, it would have to be force-fed to maintain its own body weight because it had uh, a problem with taking up uh, uh, food and, and, and eating. Um, so the dog would be force-fed to maintain its body weight for shows. It would win in shows because it was a beautiful example of the breed, aesthetically. But functionally, it was of no value whatsoever because that dog could not function on its own without its owner actually force-feeding it. And that is the kind of uh, uh, environment that we're finding modern dogdom in. Because we have forced dogs into a genetic dead end with, uh, with line breeding, forcing them to, to uh, uh, 
uh, to follow uh, um, certain aesthetics that uh, um, that are no, no longer based on a working context. So two things emerge in modern breeding. Uh, the one is a process called caricature breeding and the, the other thing of course is the, the overuse of a, of a very small gene pool. Um, and the, the one leads to sort of genetic defects or the prevalence of genetic defects um, and the other one leads to certain aesthetic anomalies that, uh, um, that become hypertrophied in, in, uh, um, in the animal. So for example, uh, just uh, you, you might describe in your breed standard that the darker the eye is the better. And uh, over the years, breeding for a darker and darker eye, thank you for that. So over the years, breeding for a darker and darker eye might get you to the point where eventually the eye is completely black. And that does not mean that that is healthy. You know, it's, so you've been breeding for a color or an aesthetic and not necessarily a, uh, a, a something that is healthy for, for the dog. Um, people that breed with dogs because they've got blue eyes and they say, oh, that's so pretty, it's so unique, etc., etc., where in actual fact the blue eye is quite a recessive trait and, and quite a negative trait. So that, again, uh, uh, um, is something that is bred for aesthetics and not for function. And that has never been the case with African uh, breeding uh, um, methodologies. The African breeding methodology has always looked at a context and, uh, and uh, uh, worked with animals that are fit for context. And that really is why we deal with an animal here that is in this environment that we're in, this context we're in, there is nothing that can compare with it, nothing that can compete. Um, I attended a lecture series by um, a, a very well-known ethologist from the States, um, Raymond Coppinger, uh, and uh, he was uh, quite instrumental in bringing out Anatolian shepherd dogs for, for the sheep program to protect sheep from, from uh, uh, um, cheetahs and, and the like. And uh, um, he was asked, does he regret anything at the end of the, of the uh, lecture series by one of the attendees? And his answer to, to the group was that he regrets having brought out Anatolian shepherds um, to this part of the world. He said because the amount of dogs that have died over the years from suffering from tick bite fever, um, other parasites, other illnesses uh, in this environment, the amount of dogs that have died, he said it's just not worth it. He said you're far better going to your local village in a rural area, finding a good looking dog and training that dog to, uh, to work as a, as a flock guardian. Uh, he said that would uh, have given dogdom a better chance. So that was an interesting uh, uh, observation that he made uh, uh, and, and that really the uh, future of these dogs, if we want to maintain them as a land race, we really must, I think, in some way uh, uh, maintain their value in terms of uh, uh, what, they, what they have uh, uh, emerged as. They really are superb flock guardian dogs. They're very good homestead dogs too, by the way. Uh, um, they really protect this property of mine uh, extremely well um, and they've got for me the right nature uh, uh, for, for what I'm looking for in a dog. But as flock guardian dogs, they, that is their greatest future. If we can get people away from, even in rural areas, uh, and I'm talking of African custodians, uh, if we can get them to re-establish the, the, um, the bond they have always shared with these dogs and not look at modern breeds as if they are some kind of uh, 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 supplement, um, we, can, we have the best chance of maintaining these genes.